Hello, I'm Holly and today's video is going to be a big old book haul. I haven't actually done a book haul in quite a few months so this is going to be an amalgamation of all the books that I bought and received between October and December. So it will include all the books that I got for Christmas and I do actually have over 30 books to talk about in this video so I think that we should just dive straight into it. The first group of books I'm going to talk about are the ones that I got in October and I have actually talked about all of these before in my October weekend getaway vlog so I will only quickly go back over these. I have talked about them before. The first one is The Vampire by Tom Holland. This is a retelling of Lord Byron if he was a vampire. Then I have Doctor Strange and Mr Norrell by Susanna Clark. This is a historical fantasy following these two magicians who have very different ideas about how to use magic. It's set during the Napoleonic era and that's all I know. It's very big, very intimidating, but I am really excited to get to this one. I also have A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is the sequel to The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but this series is more a series of companion books, so they do stand alone. And I have already read this one and I've really enjoyed it. This one is very much looking at AI, what it means to be human, all of that kind of thing and I do absolutely love this series, they're very cosy. I also have a memoir called How to Be Autistic by Charlotte Amelia Poe. Then I have Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. This is a retelling of Frankenstein set against war-torn Baghdad. A lot of commentary in this about war and people and humanity and I'm expecting it to be quite a hard-hitting read but also one that I'm absolutely going to love. And then the final book that I bought in October was was Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. I don't know too much about this. I think it follows a group of kids who go through their mirrors into this fantastical world and then they have to find these keys. I don't really know what this is about but I have heard great things and this cover definitely sold this book to me. In November I did pick up one book and this was completely random because there is this free little library thing near where I live and you can take books and get books and it's all free and I love those kind of initiatives. So I saw this one, I had heard things about it and I thought why not give it a go, why not pick it up and that is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. This one is a horror thriller and I think that one of the perspectives in this is from the perspective of a cat and that is all I heard. I don't know too much more about this. I know that there are a lot of discussions about the mental health representation in this book but I want to give it a go and see what I think. Okay then, so now let's move in to December and the first lot of books again I have talked about because these are all the classics that I've bought for my classic book club. In January I started the Novel Curiosity Book Club and we are going to be reading Gothic Classics. I will leave a link to the Discord for that in the description if you're interested and I will just very quickly run through these because I have a whole video going through what all of these ones are about so I will just list them for you. The first one is The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. This one I have already read, you can see how much I've tabbed it. Then I have The Old English Baron by Clara Reeve, The Castle of Wolfenbach by Eliza Parsons, The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe, and The Necromancer. It says on here by Peter Tolthold, but I think that might just be like, what's it called, like a pen name for the actual author, who is Carl Frederick Carlert. And those are all the ones that I have so far. I will slowly be buying the others as we go through the year, but those are the ones that I thought I would buy for the first half of 2023. I also impulse bought A Merry Little Meet Cute by Sierra Simone and Julie Murphy. I started listening to this one as an audiobook and I'm not a huge fan of audio, it just doesn't really work for me, so I wanted to get the ebook and I did. I read this one at Christmas, it was one that I really enjoyed, is just a Christmas romance between this woman who is an adult film star and then she is forced into this like Hallmark-esque Christmas movie and it's a relationship between her and the leading guy who used to be in a boy band, he has some bad reputation and it's about those two falling in love. 
And now let's get into all the books that I got at Christmas. So some of these I bought with some Christmas money that I got, some of them were gifts, and this is like the biggest stack, so let's dive straight in. The first one I bought for myself was Grave Importance by Vivian Shaw. This is the third and final book in the Dr. Greta Helsing series. The first book is Strange Practice, and in this series you're following Dr. Greta Helsing, who is the doctor to London's supernatural natural underworld. She treats vampires and mummies and ghouls and werewolves and I don't really know what this third book is about. It says on the back here, in the hills above Marseille, Oasis Natron is a highly secret health spa for mummies. So obviously she is going to this health spa for mummies. There's probably going to be some kind of murder mystery plot or some kind of mystery plot as there has been in the previous two books. I love this series. It's so fun and camp but also really gory and that just makes it a perfect series for me. I also picked up another sequel and that is The Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice. This is the third book in the Vampire Chronicles. The first book is Interview with the Vampire and I read the first book a few years ago. I read the second book which was The Vampire Lestat last year and of course I had to pick up the third book because I absolutely loved those first two books. And this series just follows a group of vampires. They're very dysfunctional, they're struggling with immortality, mortality and in this one you are following the Queen of the Damned. I'm pretty sure you're following, yeah, you're following Akasha who is like the mother of all vampires and that is all I know about this one but I have heard that this one is very popular within the people who love this series so I'm very intrigued to see what I think of this one. The next book I got was Harry the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This one is the sequel to Gideon the Ninth which is a book that I read in 2022 and absolutely loved. It ended up making it to my best books of 2022 video and in the first book you are following the members of this ninth house. In this world is a sci-fi world so there are all these different planets and they are all the different houses and you have the leaders of the houses and their bodyguards and there's all like necromancy and because of the ending of the first book I'm really intrigued to see where this book goes and where the story develops because the first book was very like self-contained there was this like murder mystery plot and a lot of things got wrapped up in that so I'm very intrigued to see what this series holds in the next few books. The next book is one that I got from my uncle and that is The Atlas Paradox by Olive e. Blake. For my birthday in June he bought me The Atlas Six which is the first book in this series and I haven't read that one yet but I am very excited to read that one. This series follows a group of magicians who are trying to get into the Alexandrian society and only like five of them can make the cut and the six of them um, so what's going to go on there. I've heard that it is very like pretentious, very dark academia, which are two things I actually quite like reading about. And now that I have this sequel, I definitely need to prioritise this series soon. Then I popped to a charity shop and I found a few books that I was really interested in. So I did pick a few up. And the first one I have is Guilty Pleasures by Laurel K. Hamilton. This cover, it was a choice. I'm just gonna give it a few seconds. I think this might be the original cover. I don't know too much about this series. I think that there is this like vampire nightclub and I don't really know too much more than that. I think this is a fantasy romance series, so romance plays a big role in this, but I don't really know too much more. This cover, it is a little bit hideous, but if I do enjoy this, I might end up picking up a nicer edition. And it's only short, but the writing in this is so tiny. So I don't know how long it will take me. I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but when I saw it, I have been looking for this one for a while. So I knew that I had to pick it up. I also have a classic and that is The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. And this one is a Russian classic. And again, look at the choices made on this cover incredible. And I've heard very interesting things about this. I think there's like a giant cat, there's perhaps the devil. 
arrives and it's a lot about Soviet life and a lot of commentary on society at this time in Russia or the Soviet Union or whatever it was at that time and I did study a bit of that for my degree and it was very interesting to me and I'm interested to see the literature that was coming around at this time because I think this one was banned when it first came out so I'm very intrigued to see how wild this one is. I do want to pick up more classics and I want to pick up more Russian classics in particular. I know that they are very popular and hopefully I can fit this one in at some point soon, maybe this year, maybe next year, we'll see. And then the final book that I picked up from a charity shop was Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvelle. This one is another sequel. As you can see, picking up sequels was a big thing for me. I really want to be reading more series in 2023 and this one is the second book, I think, in the Themis Files. The first book is Sleeping Giants and in that one, you follow this woman and when she was a girl she fell down this hole and landed on this giant metal hand and then when she is an adult she is this scientist and she is part of the team that are trying to find the other bits of this body it's very much like aliens is it aliens what is going on here and the first book is written in interview format I'm pretty sure this one is an in interview format too it is and I did enjoy the first one I only gave it like a 3.5 I think think so it wasn't a new favorite but I enjoyed it enough to want to pick up the sequel and this one is almost like brand spanking new condition and I got this from a charity shop so I had to pick it up when I saw it. Okay then, the final lot of books are the 12 books that my mum bought me for Christmas. So last Christmas I did this thing for the first time where I got my mum to pick 12 random books from this spreadsheet I keep of all the books that I'm interested in and then I'd open one every day from Christmas Day so I'd have one like Christmas Day, Boxing Day and every day for the next 12 days and it just like extends Christmas for me which is perfect and it also gets me to pick up books that have been on that TBR for years because I do try and read one of these every single month. So the first one that she got me was Cleopatra A Life by Stacey Schiff. This one is a non-fiction that I actually very recently added to that TBR spreadsheet and as you can guess from the title this one follows Cleopatra. It's following her entire life and everything that she went through and society at this time and Egypt and Rome and I'm really intrigued in ancient Egyptian like history and mythology and all of that so when I saw that I got this one I was over the moon. Then I have Ali Smith by, no I do not have Ali Smith by Hotel World. Then I have Hotel World by Ali Smith. This one is more literary and I think that this is like a collection of short stories that all come together to make like one large story following I think the death of someone who works at the hotel and it's following people who have been affected by this. I think that's the plot, I could be entirely wrong, but this one it did pop up on a few lists of like highly acclaimed books. It was shortlisted for the Booker Prize and the Orange Prize for Fiction. I can't remember exactly where I heard someone recommend this, but when they recommended it, it stuck in my mind and I knew that I wanted to read it too. The next book I have is a middle grade and that is Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. This is the first book in the Pages and Co series and in this series you are following this girl called Tilly who can bring book characters out of books. So I think Alice in Wonderland is in this, I think there's maybe Anne of Green Gables and I assume that hijinks ensue, something goes wrong perhaps, but this, the concept of this alone sold this book to me because it sounds so fun, it's so amazing for kids, this like love of reading and I'm just so excited to hopefully love this one too. Then speaking of Anne and Green Gables, I then have Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Montgomery. This is one that I have been eyeing up for the past few years because someone read, I think it was Emma from Emmy, and she just absolutely loved this. She said it was like so wholesome and heartwarming and just like really cozy, and I needed that in my life. 
This one is a Canadian classic following this girl who is an orphan and these two farmers send out to the orphanage and they're expecting a boy but they end up getting a girl and she has to help on the farm and I don't really know too much more than that. I think that this series follows Anne throughout her entire life which is a really interesting concept to follow her eventually then perhaps having kids. I don't really know but I'm hoping that this one is just super cosy, super comforting, and if it is, I'm sure that I will love it. I then have a historical fiction, which is The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. So it's following the all-female diving collective on the island of Jeju off South Korea, and it's set during the Japanese colonialism of the 1930s and 40s, the Second World War, and the Korean War. So it's following this group of women through these obviously very traumatic events. Someone definitely recommended this and when they talked about it and how much they loved it, it made me want to read it too. The next book that I have is Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. This one was translated from the Spanish and in this one you're following these robots, I think, that people buy, keep in their house and everyone from across the world can watch you through them. So everyone's watching each other. It sounds haunting. It sounds terrifying and weird and creepy and I'm intrigued to see what the author does with that kind of plot and where it goes, what is explored in this. I think that this one could be a huge surprise for me in how much I love it. Then I have Mrs England by Stacey Halls. This is a historical fiction and I have read the other two books that Stacey Halls has written and I really enjoyed them so I knew that I wanted to try this one too. I don't know too much about about the plot of this one in particular. So it says it's set in West Yorkshire in 1904 when newly graduated nursery roommate takes a position looking after the children of Charles and Lillian England, a wealthy couple from a powerful dynasty of mill owners. She hopes it will be the fresh start she needs. But as she adapts to life at the isolated Hardcastle house, it becomes clear that something's not quite right about the beautiful, mysterious Mrs England intriguing. I did love the other two books that I read by this author so I'm hoping that I end up enjoying this one too. Then I have Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This is another piece of translated work. I definitely want to be reading more translated work and work from around the world and this one is set in Japan and it's following this woman who works at a convenience store and she is perfectly happy with her life but all the people around her don't seem to be happy with her life. They're pressuring her to get married and to like find something else, but she's very happy where she is. And I think that this one is going to be a huge commentary on society and especially how society treats women. And that is something that I love to read about. So I think that I could end up really enjoying this one. I then have another middle grade and that is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. This one follows this robot who is being sent on a ship to her final destination so she's still like packaged and then the ship goes down and her packing crate kind of floats onto this island all the other robots are kind of crushed against the rocks and she wakes up she's on this island and she doesn't really know anything different from this and it's really just following her meeting all the different animals making friends and becoming this wild robot i have already read this one and then after reading this one because i enjoyed it so much i read the sea sequel as well. This is just like a really cute series. It is definitely for like a younger audience but I still took a lot from it. There was a lot of heartwarming moments in this, a lot about family and friendship and I loved it. I love the setting, I love the island and I would recommend this if you're a fan of middle grade. We're almost there now, we've only got three books left and the next one is The Tethered Mage by Melissa Caruso. This one is a fantasy and I'm pretty sure this one is sapphic. I don't know if I've got that right, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And all it says on the back is, in the Reverend Empire, magic is scarce. Those born with power are strictly controlled, taken as children to serve in the Falcon army. Zyra has grown up on the streets to avoid this fate, hiding her mage mark and thieving to survive. But hers is a rare and dangerous magic, one that threatens the entire empire. Lady Amelia Cornaro was never meant to be a falconer. Heiress and scholar, she was born into a treacherous world of political machinations, but fate has bound 
found the heir and the mage, and as war looms on the horizon, a single spark could turn their city into a pyre. Then I have a memoir called How We Fight For Our Lives by Syed Jones. This one is a memoir about being a young black gay man from the south. That's it, that's all I know. I do really enjoy memoirs or I have really enjoyed the ones that I've read and I love seeing these topics where people use their own personal experiences to kind of reflect on larger issues and I think that this one is definitely going to do something along those lines. And then we are finally at the final book that I got. This was the last Last book that I opened from that whole Christmas thing and that is Clan in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. This one is a young adult horror following this group of teenagers and there is a killer clown on the loose. That's it. It's a slasher. I love slasher films. I want to pick up more horror books. So when I heard that this one was like a slasher, I knew that I wanted to give it a go. Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin absolutely loved this one and he pretty much sold it to me when he read it. He enjoyed it so much and I was like, I've got to try that. So when I opened this, I was so over the moon because this is one that I really wanted to get to for quite a few years at like Halloween, but I never managed to fit it in. So now I think that this one is going to be my October pick. So hopefully I end up enjoying it as much as I imagine that I will. And that's it, there you have it. Those are the 32 books that I have picked up over the past few months. I don't tend to get this many books in one go. I usually spread it out through the year, but obviously there was Christmas there and I got some money and I got loads of books for Christmas and I am really happy with everything that I've got. I'm so excited to get to all of these. I am cutting back on my book buying in 2023 that's one of my big goals. So these ones should hopefully last me for a good while. Let me know if there are any books in this video that you think I should prioritise and get to soon. But that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!